Hey guys, welcome back to We Met at Acme. I am nervous, excited, feeling um, exposed about this episode. <clears throat> I'm talking about a subject that I know that I'm not the only one dealing with, but it still is scary to talk about. And that subject is the identity crisis slash career crisis that you go through postpartum. It's inevitable. And, you know, if you if you haven't gone through it, then like, uh, amazing, you know, I'm not trying to foist it upon you, hoist it upon you. I don't know, guys. My brain is fried. I, I'm coming off of two and a half weeks of no child care. And it's been really tough. We had a nanny that we liked um, or thought we liked, you know, as first time parents, I'm learning that you don't know shit and you get taken advantage of every step of the way. It's like when you're a bride and everyone's like, oh, you're a bride. It's actually double the price. That's how I feel as a first time mom constantly. And we had this nanny and you know what? I don't know. I clearly now she was, I know she wasn't a good nanny, but up until then I was like, my son giggles with her, you know, like he seems happy. She sends us photos and she ended up going MIA on us. She texted us Saturday of Labor Day weekend saying she had a family emergency in the Philippines. She's Filipino, but she actually doesn't have any family in the Philippines. I have just this women's intuition. I would, I'm not even going to call it a motherly intuition. I was like, this is, this is it. You know, like I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, say that I don't believe that she had um, a family emergency. But what I knew then and there was that, you know, she wasn't coming back. And my, you know, my horrors came through, came true. She, um, it turned out when we got home, she had like hidden her key to our apartment in the stroller and Zachary's stroller in like a secret compartment. So she had planned this. She knew she wasn't coming back. And of course, you know, Steven and I were beside ourselves. There were literally five stages of grief that we went through. And honestly, like, I, I don't even know off the top of my head what the five stages are, but I know that I didn't go through them in the right order. And I'll tell you what they are because I feel like, you know, we need some context here. It's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So first I would say, I had, yeah, I had denial first. I was like, there's no way, like she loves Zachary, you know, her and I are close. I don't know. There were no like really red flags towards the end. There were some red flags in the beginning now looking back, but towards the end, um, you know, there were some, she was more distant from us, not as friendly, whatever. But her and I, I thought had a relationship, whatever it was. And so I was in denial then I was deeply depressed and we were, you know, we both cried over this and it sounds so silly, but I think, you know, once you have kids, you realize like whoever you have your kid spending the bulk of their time with, whether it's like their daycare teachers or a nanny or like your in-laws, and then something goes wrong with this person or you realize you didn't trust this person as well as you think you did, or they weren't the person you thought they were and it hits you that they've spent all this time with your kid, your mind goes to the scariest places. Like, oh, what if they were abusing him? Or what if, God forbid, you know, anything could have happened, right? Like, we weren't there all the time. And that's terrifying because you put your kid in the hands of childcare and you just really hope that people are good people, but that's not always the case. And so I was, you know, I was really sick over it for a long time. And then I decided to share about it a little bit on my baby Instagram. And I shared, you know, our nanny told us this and then she left the key and then blah, blah, blah. And this one girl messaged me, DM me. And by the way, I had never mentioned my nanny's name, no pictures of her, nothing. Messaged me and she said, is your nanny, you know, the name that my nanny was by any chance, because this sounds really familiar. And I was like, oh my God, yes, that's my nanny's name. Holy shit. It turns out she had done the exact same thing to this family, the exact same thing verbatim. So 
honestly, this is, I'm saying this because this is the last fucking time I tell the story. I'm, I'm a broken record with this story now. I feel like I'm a girl who just got dumped and I'm going around telling everyone what happened, you know, why he, like, why I think he dumped me. Did I see the signs? And I can't do it. So after learning this, that she had done this to multiple people, that this wasn't a personal thing, that she just did it because she found a better job, you know, better. She went back to being a baby nurse, which she had been before, which you make more money from. It wasn't personal to her family. It wasn't personal to her son. I have acceptance now. Doesn't mean that I can shut the fuck up about this. Like, I literally don't know how to. And it's it's mortifying. I've been you know, we live near close to Madison Square Park. I've been going to the park and just, you know, talking to the groups of nannies and trying to get information from them, like literally doing crazy tactics to try to find out if anyone knew anything, what they're doing, you know, I sitting down to random nannies being like, so did you like think something was wrong with her? And it's mortifying. I feel like an outcast. And I'm just like that crazy mom that no one wants to hang out with. And I'm t- I'm telling the same like maniacal story over and over again, trying to get all this information at the park. Guys, I am losing it. I'm losing it. And it's so interesting because this is the first time I've been at the studio in in weeks, like since, you know, before this happened. And I have been working from barely working from home. I work from home for an hour when he naps and after work when he's asleep. And so I haven't gotten shit done at all. And I have so much resentment towards Steven. It's such a good indication of like why I want to be a working mom. Nothing against stay at home moms. I just I couldn't do it. It's the hardest job in the world. And we're going to talk about, you know, we heard from some stay at home moms who are going through this. But I just know that I want to work. At this point, during my career identity and, you know, personal identity crisis that I'm going through postpartum, which I'll share about, which this episode is about, I don't necessarily know what I want to do. But I know I want to work because I have so much resentment to Steven when he goes into the office. And that's not how I normally feel. Because I normally am able to make my own schedule and get stuff done, do interviews in the park, write my sub stack, go to the studio, whatever it is. And I can't do any of that. So I know it's a it's a good thing, right? So I, I learned I learned to what to look for in a nanny. And I learned that I want to work. So those are really good things. You know, you have to look at the silver linings of things. It's funny. I actually um I've been doing these trials with nannies and I've been training them and really running a process that is much tougher than the original one because I now know what to look for. And I shared on my baby Instagram, you know, whoever I don't hire, like if anyone wants to hire is looking in the market to hire, like, let me know. And people are in my DMs. And now I'm like, oh my God. And and I've done so much vetting and like have amazing people for people to hire. I'm like, wow, maybe I should pivot to a nanny service. Like that's where my head is at right now because I'm so fucking lost. So let's talk about this. You have a baby and then what, right? For me, I remember the first time I saw a friend post baby and it wasn't a friend coming over. I remember my friend was at, I, I, a friend of mine, my, one of my best friends was at, um, she was at Hillstone, which is like near our apartment, whatever. And I um, wanted to surprise her. I knew she was there. Like I had her location and I hadn't seen her or anyone post baby. And I was emerging to get something from CVS or maybe to go to the ATM. So I was like, let me surprise her. You know, she's waiting for a table here and like give her a hug. And so I went to surprise her. And she was like, oh, my God. And I swear to God, it was like seeing her. And this had nothing to do with her and everything to do with me. I was like, does she know how different I am now? You know what I mean? Like, does she realize that I am a totally different person? Like that I have come through the other side. I I can't even articulate that well what I meant by or mean by that. But it's like, does she see? Does she see that I'm not me anymore? 
And it was this weird feeling of just like, I am like, none of these people know that I just had a baby, you know, obviously, you know, physically you could, you could tell, but I mean like on the street and walking, it's like when you walk around for the first time after you've had a baby, you're like, no one knows. Or like, do people know? Like, does everyone know that my life just changed and that I just went through this crazy thing? You know, it's, it's, it's this really crazy thing. And then, and then you start to think about everything. You start to think about your life and your job and your baby. And especially as your baby gets older and your baby starts to interact with you and they start to smile at you and they start to do really cute things and you want to be around them all the time, it gets harder and harder, especially as you're approaching, you know, going back to work, or maybe you went back to work right away, or maybe even if you're not going back to work for, you know, six months, you start to think about work. And honestly, part of me really was hesitant to do this episode because I was like the man, you know, is going to hear this and be like, this is why we don't hire pregnant ladies or we fire pregnant people or you know, we don't trust women in the workplace. And I hate the fact that I'm kind of validating that by being honest about how women feel postpartum. But it really is a feeling where you're like, if my job isn't the best job in the world, like my, if I'm going to leave my perfect angel child at home or with someone else or just leave them period to go do something it had better be the best thing I could ever do I better be curing cancer I better be out here you know making like either either doing something really good that makes you feel good or like helps other kids or whatever right or something so consistent that you are bringing in a really you know, decent amount of money that you can then provide for these kids. Right. And it's, it's really hard. And, you know, just to, to get current about what I do specifically, you know, I, sorry, I just, I feel like my hair is like being crazy. Okay. We're just gonna, we're gonna go like this because that doesn't matter. And this does. Um, I just feel like I started this podcast seven years ago. And in 2017, that might not honestly be eight. I have no track of time. I think seven. And when I started this podcast seven years ago, I was a completely different person. It was the beginning of my Saturn return. I was 27. I had just been dumped. I was still dating toxic people. I still didn't know anything about life. And at the time, you know, I was the only person giving the advice I was giving. Like no one else was doing the dating podcast thing. Now there are tons of influencers out there with bigger reaches who are like regurgitating the same advice. And I'm not going to lie to you. I never liked the idea of being an influencer. I started a podcast because I didn't want my face to be shown anywhere. We Met at Acme's Instagram is just a logo for a reason. I never wanted it to be associated with a person, but I didn't have a choice as the world developed and podcasting developed. Video for podcasting became so paramount and it became the kind of thing that you couldn't just say, oh no, I'd rather just be voice, whatever. And Everyone who was behind a microphone all of a sudden had to be in front of the camera as well. And I started to have to do things that, you know, had me attached to it and not just this brand of We Met at Acme. And that slipped me into the influencer space. And it doesn't make me happy to be an influencer and to go to these events and have meaningless conversations. It makes me happy to podcast and to learn about other people's lives, whether it be dating or something else. You know, their life as a mother, their divorce, their journey into becoming a therapist, 
couples therapy, whatever it is, you know, I'm a curious person and that's really why I started this podcast. And so it's not like I don't know who I am. I feel like I know who I am now more than ever. And I have so much clarity around that. And I feel so like such a fierce protector of my son. And I am such like a, I, I'm not afraid, right? I'm not afraid to have hard conversations with my friends, with my family. I, I know my faults. I know that I know my character defects. I know that when I don't have control of a situation, I am the worst. I know that, you know, when someone tells me what to do, I can't handle it and I rebel. I know a lot of things about myself and I just don't know what to do. And I had a call with my team the other day and you know, I've really been, and I vocalized this on the podcast before, but I never wanted to be a mommy blogger. And I recently went on Tinks's podcast and I talked about this with her as well. Like I never wanted to be someone who loses himself in motherhood, but I did really want to find a place for the motherhood stuff because it is definitely part of my identity. I just know that before I was a mom, I didn't give a fuck about people's motherhood journey. I didn't give a fuck about your birth story. I didn't care if your kid was sleeping through the night. I didn't know what any of that meant. And so I knew that when I became a mom, I didn't want it to be my whole identity. I didn't want to think I was the first mom that ever was. And that just because I have a platform, I didn't want to become a mommy blogger. I find that people who transform their content into complete mom stuff, they lose their identity. And I didn't want to lose my identity. And I don't think I've lost my identity. And Tink's actually very kindly said, she was like, you're just yourself with a baby. And that's what I'm hoping. And that's what I feel. But, and so, yeah, I don't want to pursue making a mom my identity. I don't. But it's more like, what is the purpose of what I'm doing? And am I doing something, like, what is my purpose? And am I doing something aligned with that purpose? And of course, there is purpose in giving dating advice and sharing in collecting dating advice and helping young daters and people who are single find what I now have, which I'm very grateful to have and couldn't have had without doing the work myself and wish I had someone similar to me to talk to here growing up so I wouldn't have made so many mistakes. Like I know that there is good in what I do in terms of that, right? But half of my listeners now are moms and half of my listeners are single and dating and I am at a crossroads. And so back to this call with my team, it's more just like I need to pick a lane or figure out a way to merge lanes, but I just need to do something that feels like super aligned with me. And when I look at, like when I see creators and influencers, you know, with the dating content right now, I just feel like there's a lot of noise out there and a lot of people giving, giving like advice that I've either heard or said, or just, it's, it's a lot of the same and it's, and it's not, it's like common sense advice. You know what I mean? It's like, you're not hearing something that's like, wow, my mind is blown and of course, every now and then you get nuggets of wisdom that are really amazing. Like from our Matthew Hussey episode, I've heard a lot of people be like, I had to take notes from that one. You know, that was really good. And and I do feel like it's a problem that never ends because there's, you know, there's a person that I really enjoy and admire who is married with or was in a relationship with kids and now is getting a divorce. So that person needs a a, pod, a dating podcast, right? That person, like there's always going to be a need for it because people are always going to be breaking up and getting back together. And I do think that it's important, but I think it's hard. I think the identity crisis is very real and you just want to make sure that you are doing something so 
fulfilling. And I need to check in with myself and see if I'm fulfilled. And by the way, I am talking as someone who has more flexibility than most. I probably would have dreamed for a job like mine where I could sometimes be at home and see my baby and then sometimes be at the studio or wherever else working. I think it is incredible. I'm just more concerned, like, is this sustainable? And my husband is you know, working on his startup and it, neither of us have this consistency of like a regular paycheck that we know is going to support our child and our child care and all of this. And that once you have a kid, you realize is so important. Like all you want is a nine to five. All you want is to know when the next check is coming, what it's going to, knowing that you're never going to be on your ass and and that is really tough for the identity crisis, right? And then I want to share a little bit about what um what some people wrote in, some moms wrote in about their kind of crises. And then we can talk about it. So this person said, I worked as a successful teacher for a decade and then became a stay-at-home mom. Everyone suddenly kept coming up with little hobbies that they thought I should start. And my husband started talking about how he was giving me things. Like, for example, we bought a new car that better fit more kids in the future. And in a fight, he argued that he gave me that car. I don't think anyone predicts how hard it would it will be to transition from contributing an income to contributing no money, but feeling like you are giving more of yourself than you ever have. By the way, since then, we've had many talks about what an intense transition it's been, and he no longer says he's giving me things. I really appreciate this take, and I always think it's amazing to hear from a stay-at-home mom because I have, other than these two and a half weeks, I haven't had that full experience, and I don't know what it's like to do that permanently. What I will say is that stay, being a stay-at-home mom with no help is the hardest job in the universe. And it's really, really tough. And so, you know, growing, I grew up with a stay-at-home mom. Steven's mom became a stay-at-home mom quickly after he, you know, and his sister were born. And I don't think we really appreciated how much of a big deal that was. I remember growing up, people used to ask me like, well, like, what do your parents do? Like, you know, in kid, like in kindergarten, like, like silly, like, you know, nothing, you know what I'm saying? And they'd be like, oh, like my dad like does this and my mom does this. And I remember I'd be like, oh, my mom like doesn't do anything. Like, I think I actually said that because I didn't know how much she did. And only once you become a parent yourself, do you realize how much that is a extremely legitimate job and how much respect to have for a stay-at-home mom or you know your mom if if she if she does that so I'm glad that that person shared this person said I'm currently five months postpartum and went back to work two weeks ago I liked my job before I went on leave but I wouldn't say I love it nothing feels more important to me than being with my baby and I feel like I was forced to go back to work before I was ready because we need the income. It isn't just the job itself. It's the commuting and the mental load that comes with getting to daycare on time and making sure I'm, if I'm late to communicate to my boss, daycare drop off, daycare drop off doubled my original commute time. And in the evenings, I only have, we only have an hour together. I wish I would have gone back gone back part-time or to a fully remote job where I can at least worry less about communicating and some of the mental load. I also don't have the ability to stay late or go early to the office anymore because of my baby, so it feels like I could take a hit in my career, which I guess doesn't matter too much because my brain is rewired now. All that is to say, I just wish I didn't have to work as if I didn't just have a baby. So I think this person is saying, like, I wish it was acknowledged that I just had a baby and not just like, okay, come back and work. And, you know, and, and I was saying that before, like, I wish it's almost like I wish I was wearing a sign that was like, I just gave birth to a life, like, leave me the fuck alone. And it's really hard. And I can't even imagine only having an hour with my baby 
and and I've had days like that and, and it makes me sad and it's and it's really really hard and that's the kind of thing that makes you rethink everything about what you're doing and if you're making the right decisions because truly truly the most important thing in the world is being with your child and there's so much that you worry about missing like I remember when Zachary was starting to crawl and I was working a lot that week and I was like what if I miss the crawling and it sounds so stupid but it really is it really is a thing um this person said I'm already having an identity crisis and my baby isn't even here yet I was packing up all my summer clothes and wondered if I would ever fit into them again and if I would even want to wear them like going out outfits and crop tops that represented a different non-mom version of myself. I had a wave of sadness grieving the loss of my young carefree life. Also, all pictures of travel last year keep popping up on my iPhone and again feeling a sadness that a certain part of me and my relationship is over. I know it comes with a whole new exciting chapter and so, so much happiness and love, but I feel, and maybe it's just pregnancy hormones, so emotional about losing myself. I love the realness here. And I think it's so important in response to this person that you don't have to lose yourself. And the difference is you will always now be worried, right? You'll always be, your heart will always be out of your body, but you can still be you. And and I find that that takes a lot of effort and it takes going to girls' dinners and not being afraid to like take a trip and put your husband on duty or your in-laws or your parents or whatever it is, you know, it's so important to stay close to whatever makes you feel like yourself. And it's not, it's never going to be easy. And you might not even have an opportunity to do anything for a long time, but you can totally wear a crop top again, girl, if that's what you want, right? Like something I've noticed about myself post postpartum is like, I definitely dress a little bit more like a mom than like a, you know, a girl in her 20s, which is, which maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. This person said, I lost my job when I was almost six months pregnant and it was beyond stressful. I'm super fortunate to have a husband that told me to focus on my health and our babies. And if I wanted back to work, he, after he wanted to go back to work after he was born, it was my choice. I've never not worked. So at first it was hard for me because I felt like I wasn't contributing to our relationship. My son is now five months old today and I couldn't be happier being a stay-at-home mom. I love spending every day being with my baby, feeding him, practicing tummy time, and now sitting, putting him down for naps. It's the most rewarding job I've ever had. I have basically no time for myself, but I couldn't be happier with my new identity as a mom. I think letting an employee go when they're pregnant is absolutely vile and disgusting, but at the end of the day, it was such a blessing for me and my family. And I've heard this story again and again, you know, being fired when you're pregnant and unfortunately you can't sue them because there's no proof that it was because you were pregnant. It sucks. Um, but it sounds like this person had a really wonderful experience with it and they, you know, they discover that this is their true happiness and I love that for them. This person had a similar situation. I decided to leave my full-time job in healthcare to be a stay-at-home mom. I grew up with both parents working full-time jobs and felt that I did not have many childhood memories with my parents. My husband and I have the luxury of my ability to be a stay-at-home mom without sacrificing lifestyle. It has been around eight months while I'm more than obsessed with my daughter. I find that I crave those intellectual and social challenges that come with work. I even miss stupid coworker gossip. Is it possible to get both that strong, unbreakable bond with your baby and the power and self-satisfaction that comes with work and providing for yourself? Such a great question. And I would love to know. And I think, I think if, if I personally was feeling so aligned with what I was doing right now and making like, I'm just going to be honest, as much money as I was in the pandemic, for example, when like all people did was listen to podcasts. I feel like I would be feeling that balance. I find it so impossible. And I think that's part of why I wanted to do this episode because I wanted to be transparent with you guys that I don't fucking know. Like, I just, I don't know right now. Um, I really don't know. And like, part of me just not to, you know, not to make these people's stories about me, but just because I'm 
being open with you. Like, I just want to pack it up. Like, I'm just like, let me just pack it up. Let me end the podcast. Let me like, no one wants it anyway. No one needs it anyway. Let me end the podcast and let me go work at a, a an investment bank. Let me go get a job at Goldman Sachs and start making $300,000 a year and working my ass off. Like that is where I'm at right now. That is where I'm at because I'm like, at least then I'll be miserable, but I'll always know that I'll be doing something for my kid. Like that is so crazy, but that's what you think about, you know, like your kid comes first. So you're like, what am I doing over here? Wasting time when the time should be going to something that I can at least put in like a savings account for him. It's really fucking hard. All right. This person said for the maternal identity, I think that the thing that it, that is different is it's not an individual identity. It's a sort of diffusion of self as part of family. Like, I don't think it's the same thing and feel the same way as others do. And mine's still developing. That's interesting. I think it is, it is definitely, you're thinking of your identity as, as it relates to the family. And so you're like, am I doing enough? Am I doing my part? Is there more I could be doing? You know, and then mom guilt, of course. This person said, I thought my whole life I was going to be a, a hustler with my career and always have. Workaholic for sure. My role was eliminated and I was let go in April 2023. And I found out a week later that I was pregnant. For the past year, I've had some freelance work find its way to me. And honestly, I, I was pregnant. It was great. I had some interviews for full-time work that wouldn't start until July 2024 when my baby would be five months old. I was interviewing while I was heavily pregnant and I didn't get any of those jobs. Now that I have my baby, I find myself really fluctuating on a daily, sometimes hourly, and sometimes honestly, even minute to minute basis on what I want to professionally do professionally and personally at this time in my life. I still have professional goals that I want to achieve, but in other moments, I feel really pulled to a slower existence, spending more time with my baby after so many years of hustling. I never could have predicted feeling this way and that I could possibly be happy being a stay-at-home or part-time stay-at-home mom. So sorting through a lot of psychology there. It's really interesting. And I think you really don't know until you're in it. I think I'm coming to realize that if you want to work, the best case scenario for a working mom is working remotely because you see your baby, you work, you bring in an income and you're still close to home. That's the best. This person said that, oh, this person had a terrible situation where their mentor became a different person when she found out she was pregnant and basically fired her. So that person sucks. And I hate them for this person. This person said, on the down low, my goal is to find a work from home job so I can cut the commute in half and be able to do tasks during the workday so I can be more present with my baby and get more sleep when he's home. I think that's the dream. This person said, I was supposed to go back to work last week and had to extend a week because I just wasn't ready. Three months isn't enough. And I already feel like it's more than so many people. And I'm so grateful. But how do I go back to work after being attached to my baby 24 seven for three months? I imagine once I get there, it will be better, but the looming thought of going back is overwhelming. I used to care so much about my career, and now my only priority is my baby. I'll work just so I can provide for her. I couldn't agree more with this. And I think it's really hard, you know, stay-at-home moms have the hardest job ever just in being present with their kids all the time and being physically exhausted. But working moms have to do all the things that stay-at-home mom do, moms do in terms of like organization with doctor's appointments and planning and school and organize like keeping track of the nanny or the daycare for the most part right every now and then there's a husband who does that and has to deal with work so they're not even physically around for their kid yet they have to organize all the shit so like that just fucking sucks this person said when I found out I was I was pregnant I was also starting and co-founding a tech startup with three other male co-founders. I know it could be risky, but I figured this could lead to something bigger than the job for my daughter. 
Fast forward to first week on maternity leave and my other co-founders wanted to stop working on it. We were having issues with funding, so it failed. Basically, the worst case scenario happened. It was completely my choice to take the risk. I'm not a victim, but for my male co-founders, it's been easier finding the next role. And for me, I was then stuck at home with a newborn and no childcare and no family around. Battling the challenges of first-time motherhood and also having to figure out my next career move was impossible. Learning to navigate this new life and having barely any time to apply to jobs has been incredibly stressful. I now have a part-time nanny, so I have more time, but I'm still figuring out my next career move. And on top of that, I'm having a crisis on whether what I've been doing for my career has made me happy. It's funny. Part of me is going back to who I dreamed of being when I was 15. That's fashion for me. So now I'm trying to look into fashion tech roles because I feel like that aligns more with who I meant to be. I was meant to be before adulthood pulled me into different directions. And I kind of love that. And I feel like we should maybe end on that note because it's like find what truly made you so happy, like what really lit you up before all of this before you graduated and you took the only job that was available. And if something still does, you know, and you can do that and be a mom, how fucking amazing, right? And I think I'd like to take my own advice and I would like to really soul search. And like, I wish this conclusion was me being like, and now the podcast is going to be on, you know, finding the best tomato in North, in the Northeast. I wish I could tell you what exactly we're going to be talking about. I think for now, you know, I have a lot of episodes that I've recorded already. I'm still going to talk to people about their dating lives. I feel like my dating conversations and my dating life led me to being married, to having the most wonderful special son. And that's my story to tell right now. And in the meantime, I'll do some soul searching. Maybe I'll start a nanny agency. (laughs) Maybe, you know, I did start a mom group, which has been incredibly fulfilling, just seeing moms helping each other. But I am not just a mother. I like to think that there's more to me as a person. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with being just a mother. But it's important for me to separate myself from that because that is a part of who I am. It's not the whole thing. I'm not only someone who's sober. I am sober and a mother and a friend and a daughter and a sister and like so much more. And I think it's so important to try to soul search and get in touch with what exactly you want to do postpartum because your time is more valuable now than ever. And even though maybe your child might be small as you're listening to this, might not even remember you being around, maybe to you, you won't get those moments back. And so if you're, and I talked about this already, but if you're going to be off doing something, it better be the greatest fucking thing on earth. It better be super fulfilling. And, you know, if you're going to be home, then like you got to love it. I wish that this was like a more positive episode, but I think sometimes you just have to be really real and honest because maybe that's how you'll get the answer. Maybe something will come up from that vulnerability and honesty. And I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you, whether you're moms or not on how you kind of figured out what it is that lights you up and if there's even like a way to pursue your dreams after becoming a mom. So maybe you went back to school or maybe your job, your dream was to quit working, whatever it was. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And as always, thank you for listening.